<laughs> Dude, it's warm in here. My balls are just sweating. It is warm just in here. Just sweating away. Like, right, I just sat back down and I was like, woo! Yeah. <laughs> so. Getting a little swampy in there. Now the song's dropping something off. So, obviously we're in soft. Um, there were minor technical issues. One camera just didn't record at all. And it was like, oh, this is amazing. And it didn't happen. So, we're inside of my office. Kind of jerry-rigged a small, small little setup. So, we can still do it. It's definitely off. Definitely change the schedule a little bit. But, ultimately, I think it's worth it. I think, I think we'll turn something good out of this, but we'll test it out. This is our, our plan B, our second of this week. Still working out all the kinks. Need some, need some graphic that just goes issues. And even if it's just a picture of me and Mike's face, issues. <laughs> so we're, we're probably gonna talk about a couple things for this next hour or so and See, we can't get good in conversation. It's kind of weird not having him here and I'm talking and there's no one. But that's the best part of breaking out of your comfort zone and trying to get through the flow into this new regimen. I am super going to be passive aggressive and fucking order you fucking post wash towels on Amazon. Post wash towels? Yeah. You gotta get real passive aggressive about that shit. They're just gonna show up at your door, just gonna be like, "What are these?" My mom's done it like four times. I'm gonna keep doing it until y'all use them. <laughs> so we did use the one she bought. It's just because we go through towels so often that eventually a dog will get it because has something on it, or a cat will get it, and then it just makes its way into our storage closet where we just don't use them. I'm going to keep ordering them until there's consistently one into the spare bathroom. Because it bothers you. But nothing drives me nuts more than going, oh, I'm going <laughs> to dry it off, off, dry it off on my pants, which are not clean, by the way, because, I mean, my pants are clean. They're but, a lot cleaner than your phone. But, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> I need to I need to order, I broke my last one. I had a UV. Yeah, from, the UV light. And then I used to, like, take some wipes to it, hit it with the UV light, but I broke the UV light. And I haven't ordered Our master toilet one. has the whole UV light setting built into it. Yeah. So it's just like, it's not as gross, but it's still gross. It's just not as gross. Uh, I mean, toilet's almost cleaner than most other surfaces in your house. No, I'm not discounting that. And I know Jess cleans it at least once a week. So yeah. I know it's clean, but it's like UV light. Yes, it does its job, but then you have everything else going into it. Yes, water flushes it. The whole understanding of all of it, but... Okay, we need a lighthearted topic to start off with. No, no, women's uh, rights. Ah! I know what I'm going to start with. Yeah? Yep. You ready now? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is name pending. Yes, this is name pending. Again. I'm Mike, no. I'm Keith, no. You're Mike. I'm Mike I'm Pulitzer. Keith. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> so obviously we're in my office. We had technical difficulty. One camera just didn't record at all. Didn't record anything. And I thought it was a great story conversation. And It was good. It definitely, at the end, got very drunken. Oh, it did get really drunken. Like, like I don't remember, I didn't tell you this, but I don't remember, like, coming inside. I have vague, blurry recollections of being on the couch, but, like... I don't know what we did. We watched YouTube. We watched uh, Adam <laughs> Savage. Oh, <laughs> did we really? <laughs> Talking about the vice. Oh, stuff. yeah, because I wanted to show you that vice. Yeah. Um, which like, was... I almost bought it like three or four times already. Yeah, because it's super awesome, but I have no need for it. It's called the... What vice is it? Okay. It has a specific name. Fractal vice. It's called a fractal vice. Okay. No idea, I don't remember. <laughs> I do remember it. Yeah. I do remember the night fully. I, about the time I went to bed, and that last beer, I was like, 
<laughs> I'll feel it now. Went to bed, woke up at seven, but at the same time you left. And it was just like, oh, Mike's gone. And I look at my cameras, and was like, yep, Mike left. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I woke up, and I don't know if I was exactly drunk, but I wasn't ready to like hit the road yet. Like I was still recovering. Yeah. I was trying to get out of the door, like waking up up enough to get out of the door because my dogs had already set your dogs off like twice. No, it's. Whatever. And so I was like, I don't want to wake the child up. Yeah. All, all yesterday was just a lazy day for all of us. But it was lazy for me too. Like I had, I was planning on getting shit done, and that did not happen. I think I had like three naps. <laughs> Just like <laughs> actual three naps. And then Ruth would come up, she'd have a couple naps. And then Jess, she came out. Like we we all woke up around seven, eight-ish. Jess comes out with us, falls asleep on the couch for like four hours. <laughs> I was like, okay, she's tired, I get it. And then she wakes up for about two hours, falls asleep for another hour and a half. And I'm having my naps and then around four o'clock, I was like, I'm still a little bit tired. I'll sleep for about an hour and a half. And I, I did. But then Jess goes, you, you gotta wake up so you sleep tonight? It's like, I'm exhausted. Like, I have no problem sleeping. And then slept last night in the morning. I was like, I'm good now. She was like, you have so many hours of sleep in the last 24 hours. <laughs> but I was definitely there. Well, to be fair, I mean, you know, we went to bed pretty late. Way later than we normally do. One thirty-two o'clock. Yeah, no, normally it's like, 10 o'clock, I'm in bed. Um, and then, you know, pushing it so late, that really fucked me up. Yeah, so earlier you are saying you want to talk about something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about space. Space! space like, outside the atmosphere space, or, like, what layer of space? The void. Like, the whole of space. Like, yeah. stars, moon, planets. Specifically, I want to talk about how much water they're finding in unexpected places. Jupiter was one of them just recently. On several moons, on several planets, they expect well, to find liquid water. On Jupiter was, I think that was yesterday, the day before, when I yeah. finally got it. But on Jupiter, I was like, okay, so is it like frozen? Nope, full on water. So it's like did, liquid water. Yeah. So it's funny because they're like, well, water is where we're going to find life based off of our current understanding of things. Correct. But they didn't think that water was nearly as common, but it is everywhere exactly. in our own solar system. So if it's everywhere in our own solar system, there's expectations that it's going to be everywhere outside. And not only that, but they're they're redefining where they think life can actually be because What's of a livable space. Right, because they, they thought that before, unless it was in the, the Goldilocks zone, that no no nothing was a livable livable hard. environment, right? Um so you know, this, this opens up so much for potential, like going forward into, you know, out, out there and beyond the universe. Yeah. space. Yeah. And it, I'm really excited about it, honestly. So, so it was a couple years ago now, but there was a big asteroid that was supposedly going to come through the belt between Mars and Jupiter. Yeah. And it was like, there's water on it. There's greenery on it. There's possibility of life being on it. It ended up just going straight through the solar system all the way. It was like, if an asteroid can have it, that was like one of the first times they're like, it's possible, but it's a one-off. It's an asteroid, maybe it's part of a planet, maybe whatever. But then Jupiter was one. Mars, they keep finding stuff because it's, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. All the hypes about Mars and certain things. But then we start finding water in different areas. And then I think it was earlier this year, and I relate this to it just because NASA did a study on it. Plants can see you. Like plants have the ability to see their surroundings not the same way we understand seeing right more topographical or something along those yeah. lines and i was like wow and my mind immediately goes to vegans because my mom was a vegan i was like oh this is gonna hurt i think my favorite one is uh you know plants scream yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's vegan for health issues and yeah issues for that yeah and occasionally she loves chicken so she's not true vegan but and i was like oh that's funny I was like, could you imagine being a, a plant on an asteroid, like the one asteroid that flew all the way through? And like you said, they see everything and then they're just screaming. Could you imagine just, what? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, you fly through space and it's like, we're gonna hit it, we're gonna hit it. And they hit it. It was like, no, Bob, 
<laughs> just splits two different ways. It's like, oh, my mind's a scary place. Well, it, they've also been discovering so many things about like black holes. Wow, there was one. Um, it was it was a couple weeks ago now, but something came out of things were coming out of the black hole. Yes, I don't remember the whole story of it. So like radiation has been coming, like radiation has been coming out of black holes, and before they thought that like nothing came out of black holes, but it was like years ago someone managed to like hear the black hole in the center of our galaxy, the super yeah. super massive black hole, right? But you know, there's it opens up a lot of questions about you know, our, our universe and, you know, how it moves, how it expands, how, how, it can, you know, they're not sure about a lot of things. I mean, they still think that the big bang is how the universe came into existence. Right. Correct. But, you know, they think that some of these black holes couldn't have existed already existed when the big bang kicked off because they're so big. Correct. I mean, I've seen a couple things. One of the biggest things to talk about is size, like, size comparison. It's like, oh, Earth is this big, Jupiter is this big. We base it off our solar system. Right. It's like, what if somewhere, and there's jokes about it, it's like, oh, some being is playing Sims, like God or Allah or Buddha, like someone's just playing Sims with all of us. And you see the men in black, the marbles, and your whole galaxy is a marble. Yeah. Right? So you have all these size things, but they're coming up in conversation again because black holes. It was like, originally we thought black holes went to like Einstein and Tesla talking about instant transportation, we just don't know how it works. Yeah. Matter goes in, but it doesn't leave. Where does it go? Because object in motion stay in motion. Well, you know, it's the theory that, you know, energy energy and information cannot be destroyed. Correct. And right? that's exactly where I was going. Like it, it can't. It will always exist just on so one level. Where does it go? So there's you know, the theory of like white holes, right? right? Um, except that we haven't had any instances of viewing a white hole. But there's theories of Maybe they punch from our universe into another universe. Maybe they punch from somewhere in our universe to somewhere else in our universe. You know, there's a lot of stuff that they're not sure about. And part of the problem is because we haven't left our solar system. So we're only seeing everything from really one perspective. It was um, it just past Pluto or beyond Pluto, planet X. Or the moon of Pluto. Oh yeah, the moon of Pluto. Yeah. Um, it just passed there. It's not the satellite. It's one of the, um, I don't know, probes we sent out. Oh, we sent out so many probes. Well, yeah, we have. We have like over thousands of freaking just debris in our atmosphere. Well, I meant probes, not like debris. Oh, okay. Well, they all started from somewhere. Right. <laughs> but it passed that. I think 2016, 2017, and it's just exploring out there. Yeah, I mean, it's just gone. And, but we won't start seeing the fruits of it for like four or five years because it eventually gets here. Well, now I can be talking out my ass, but weren't we still getting stuff from the Voyager probe? For that like was supposed to be dead? It was supposed to just die, and it just kept going. Well, that that's something else in cra that's crazy about NASA, because they always build two of everything. One, so here they can modify certain things that they can do. And then when it's up there, either for astronauts or their own little drones that fix it, and it somehow the battery source just keeps going. Well, they put solar panels on it, but they estimated based off our atmosphere and our world. And then what we have at the space station, how long it would last. Well, it's, I think it's surpassed about like 10 years so yeah. far. And I think it's still pushing back information slowly that's super cool. It's like, holy cow. Like, and this is 10, 20 year old technology. Yeah. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes, but now they're also talking about going closer to the sun to explore more. Like, which is definitely interesting. I think, I think one of the, The closer we get to the sun, they're worried about flares, and we, we've seen that in the, the past couple of years. Like, oh, it's going to destroy the internet, or it's going to have this effect here. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, it's going to have the effect here. If we're sending people, live beings, towards the sun, 
What's going to happen to them? What's going to happen? Because NASA in the past couple of years were saying, oh, well, we can't get past our atmosphere because of radiation. And, like, seriously, this has been all over the news for like the past 12 years. Like, they're like, we can't do it now that we know there's a radiation zone that affects oh, more. Oh, so they're saying that they didn't know about the radiation zone When they zone first before. said April to the moon, yeah. Uh, I thought they did. I mean, I thought, I thought they, they did know about the radiation zone, but they knew how to calculate around it based off of the magnetic sphere, you know, and how it deflected that radiation. I mean, possibly, but I know everything that's been released in like the past 20 years, because I was, I was really researching this. Because some conspiracy theorists was like, oh, we never let them. I don't care. I just, I want to see the facts we know. What is proven and true to the best of our ability. Right. So I'm looking through all this stuff. And and I think it, it all sparked because India just sent a probe to the moon. And it was unmanned, I believed. And they landed on the moon, explored a little bit, planted their flags. And there's two flags on the moon. And they came back. One's white and one's Indian. <laughs> <laughs> one's American and one's Indian. No, I mean, it's literally bleached white. Yeah, now. it's bleached white now. So, I guess the moon's surrendering. <laughs> <laughs> but NASA started rethinking about sending drones up there for communications, for solar power, like stuff so we can start receiving it there and then start building off of it. Yeah. Because if we could have a space station on the moon that's international, what would we be limited to at that point? It'd be like our first point of contact to build beyond. Right, and we're not worried about it like falling into the atmosphere and stuff like that that we are with the International Space Station. Correct. Yeah, but I mean, there was a lot of good knowledge that came out of the International Space Station. Oh yeah. Station. Like really good shit. Like we, we have people that go up there for weather and we understand storms better. We understand movement of continents. Like we, we talk about all the small things we receive just from being up there. I mean, they're small in comparison to what's already been known. Right. But they slowly tune it better and better. So I think humanity, in the sense, the more technologically advanced we get, we can get to a point where we're not like higher beings, but... No, but... We understand more about, I guess, the universe and life in general. And our progression happens really fast. I mean, yes. I mean, as bad as the atrocity has happened in every war, we have prisoners of war and all this, like, Nazis are horrible. Oh, everyone is horrible. Every, every war is before horrible. that, but we get all these medical knowledge from it, which is horrible, yes, but there is still learned from it on certain right. aspects. And it's the same thing with new medical advances. We're like, oh, we're gonna try this. That's why we have studies. So we'll do studies, I think, MD Anderson is doing nanobots. Yeah. Nanobots that attack cancer cells and they just live in your bloodstream. Give me that shit. Fucking shoot like, me up. <laughs> don't care. Get rid of that cancer. So that it's going to a point that we're we're understanding more and more. I think they've had I think it's like thirty thousand test subjects of to course. actually I mean it's not fully approved, it's experimental, it's going through the approval process. Of course, we're about to hit, you know, every time new technologies come out, they always say that it's the end of our ability to, to you know, it's going to make it to where people can't work and no one has yeah. jobs. And so AI is AI the latest is one where they're saying, and I just read a paper where they're like, it's going to be the end of everything. No one's going to have jobs anymore. <laughs> and it's like, well, I mean. I saw an article about AI. So in Austin, Texas, they have all these non-manned cars. They're taxis. Yeah. Pull up on your app. Uh, there was just a roadblock. Because I saw that. this one went to turn left, this one turned right. But they were both being polite AI. And they are both moving forward when it was like, no, you go, you go. So now they're all stuck just because it's downtown Austin. So it's already busy. And then you have all these AI cars running around as a test. It's like... I mean, we'll still always need human input somewhere. You can't, right. you can't just get rid of it. A computer will only do what it's told to do. Like a calculator, great invention, but it's not just gonna run numbers. Run yeah, numbers I mean, if I, put the, if I put the wrong numbers in, that calculator is still gonna spit out garbage, mm -hmm. right? So at some point, the human interaction is going to fuck it up. Correct. So, and we see it in self-driving cars. We see it in, was it the chat GPT or... Yeah. Any I any the chat chat GPT where it like has too many fingers 
Every time it's got too many figures, you're like, that's creepy. So, I mean, there's, there's a multiple of them that just, there's still human interaction. Like, yes, right. I do think some jobs will be minimized, like McDonald's. That happened in the past couple of years where they had this own ordering, self-ordering thing. And we've seen at self-checkouts at Walmart, but it's the same concept. And they got rid of, I think it was like 15,000 of their workforce. Well, and you know, let me let me get up on my soapbox and get real old man real Ooh, quick. Okay, all yours. I am. There are tons of jobs out there that people don't want to do because they are dirty jobs. I don't know. Every time I've been laid off from my job, I go back to blue collar. Well, that's that's you and me, right? Like, you know, I I understand. It's like a lot of people don't want to do dirty jobs, but it pays. I pulled I pulled into a car wash one time, right? And there were oh, two kids, oh, and dear. Um, I don't know how we got onto it, but one of them was talking about you know possibly joining the military. And I was like, hey, okay. I mean that would be good if that's what you want to do, right? I was like, but don't feel like you have to just in order to get a decent job. I was like, have you thought about doing any blue collar work, any like plumber or electrician or anything like that? And he's like, no. And I'm like, why not? Well, I think a lot of that comes down to not even just the parents, but society. Society. Because I think it was what, 10 years that Dirty Jobs wasn't on the air. They just recently started again. Mm -hmm. But we have our age where it's like, oh, well, I'll do a dirty job because it pays. And I saw it on Discovery Channel and I understand it. It works well. Well, but. It's people our age who are refusing to do those dirty jobs. People in our generation who are the problem in this regard. And part of the reason that they were prob- they have this misconception of what a job is, that the job needs to be an AC, I need to be a programmer, or I need to be this, or I need to be that, because they, they don't think that the, the dirty jobs, you know, the trade jobs make a lot of money. Yeah. Which they do, especially nowadays where there's a shortage. Um, and they don't want to do anything that requires a lot of work. Me and my wife were watching the new Dirty Jobs. And one of the things I never even knew about. Like I knew rebar was in concrete that goes over. and Yeah. But I didn't realize how much was there. Or how much they made. Like they start at 80 and it just goes up every year. Like, yes, really? We're talking like 80? one. 80,000. Hold this shit. is in Florida also. Starts at 80. You don't know shit. Like, you were coming in pretty much as an intern, talking IT level and administration, the cool jobs, the white collar jobs, but blue collar job, you start at 80. And it's like, okay. And then it just goes up and up and up. I think one of the guys is making 145,000. And yes, he's out there sweating his ass off, drinking shit, tons of water, getting those electrolyte popsicles, yeah. but you know, that's fine. It works. Yeah. But he's been there for 20 years. He has a college degree. He has a master's degree. He doesn't use any of it. Doesn't need to. No, he doesn't. But he did this because at the time, I think he's like 40, 50 years old now, and he's still doing it, and he's in better shape than most people we know. Yeah. So. Probably like, in better shape than you and me. Oh, together. definitely. Like, dude's throwing, like, each one of these rebar... I think it's about 40 feet. So they get about three guys to carry it. So their saying is one bar for each person, and then you carry one for the company. So they're carrying four bars. Each one of these bars weighs like 100 pounds. Yeah. So you're carrying 400 pounds with three guys. And depending on how much more you get, and it's just faster. But I was like, I, I probably would have done that if I knew that I was there. But the same thing when you're talking to the guys at the car wash. I push two things. Either you join the military, so you can either find out what you want to do, right. get benefits like education, trade school, learn more, find out, oh, I don't want to do this, maybe you do like it, maybe it becomes a career, or you find blue collar. Because there's so much, like AC guys, well, South Texas, like we always need AC guys because ACs always go out. And do not misconstrue this as me talking shit about my parents, right? Because my parents did a good job at raising but this was also during the time of no child left behind. Yeah. My parents fell into the same misconception that a lot of parents, you know, that were raising our generation fell into is that you need to go to college to be a success. And my parents pushed that. And so I get out and I didn't want to go to college because I don't like school in general, right? Like that's not the kind of learning I enjoy doing. Yeah, um, I, don't. I, want to, I want to learn something. Right. Um, but I, 
I was set adrift because I didn't know what other options there were. I just didn't know what other, I didn't have an idea of what my options were. Yeah. And if I had known that I had these options, I like probably would have gone to I point. probably would have done AC, you know, yeah. I, because there were, there were friends of, you know, Ash Dad who would have taken me on as an AC apprentice, right? Okay, that's that's solid work. Yeah, you know? I can learn a skill that, not that the jobs we have now are bad skills, but there's blue collar skills that pay in it. Everybody's it's, so blinded by, oh, we gotta do this. And now we're at a point where everyone's going to college and nobody can find a college level job for what they train for. Well, and, and now, unless you're getting a master's degree, a college degree, it's work. Relevant, yeah. You know, fuck associates. Associates shouldn't even be on the board now. <laughs> That's so true. And, I mean, a lot of it has to do with how we've shaped what a college degree looks like. Well, my brother's a perfect example of this. He was born in 98. So a little bit out of our generation, but same mindset by how my parents were raised. Right. So he joined the guard so he could be at home, be close to family and all that. He has a wife and two kids now, but the military trained him how to weld. Like, and he's had job offers for like 60 to $80 an hour to weld. I was like, bro, you could be a huge breadwinner. Yeah, do it. He's like, I want to be a dentist now. It was like, you, you just finished school. You got your associates, you got your bachelor's and it's all welding. He was like, well, I want to restart. I want to go back to a point where I can I can do something different entirely. So now he's going to be a dentist. He's like, you you have always been so anal about people's hygiene. Now you want to be in someone's mouth. It's like, you're worried about being dirty. You're worried about all this, but you've never had a problem doing outside work. We called, so my dad was like, oh, we're going to do some, some slave labor. We're going to do some work. We're going to, we're going to sweat, but then we'd always have a good dinner. Like we're putting sweat equity into something around the house. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't want to do it. Like it took them, they had their house for a year and a half to paint one wall. It took my older sister to come in and paint the wall while she's watching the kids. He just, he got lazy. He's like, it's not what I want to do. I want it to be a, a clean job. I want to stay in AC. I don't want to do anything. And this is coming from someone, he was fit, like cut to the nine, lean muscle, even after he was married for a little bit, he was lean muscle, and then he just kind of fell off. It's like, bro, you're like five, six, and you weigh more than I do at six foot. Damn. Like, you, you need a, some activity. Like, yes, I know you have kids running around, and I understand that it's hard. Find it, find the time. When you put them down for a nap, work out, do something. Something, bro. So, I don't want to say I fully understand that, oh, I don't want to get a job because it's this. No, find a job that pays for your lifestyle. I mean, and so this is, I think this is a hang up I have with a lot of people is because people always say that they want to do their dream, right? They want to follow their dream. And I'm always saying, it's great that you want to follow your dream, have a backup career. Yes. Right? Like, okay, I want my band to be a success. All right. What's your second? Yeah, have some kind of backup skill that's not being a bartender. All right, that's your, not waiting tables. Put your eggs in multiple baskets. Don't just, all of them are here. And it's like, and if this doesn't go in your, if it does, cool, but if it doesn't, because you see NFL, NBA, all these people, they last 10, 15 years at most. There's, yeah. there's outliers, but a lot of them start doing stuff near the last couple of years of their career. It's like, so they're getting into something else. It's like, so the dream was always, oh, I'm gonna play professional this. Yeah. Well, what's what's following? Well, and then how many people, they, they get out of high school and they think that they're going to go to a college and, and, and then eventually be a pro athlete. Yeah. But then they get to college and they have the rude awakening of, oh, yeah. I might've been hot shit in my high school, but I'm nothing. But now I'm college fighting with everyone else that was hot shit. And then it, we take it even further and they're getting out of senior year of college and they're going, oh, professional world is a lot smaller, a lot smaller. than I thought it was, especially when we're talking football. Yeah, football is football is 36 teams, 32. 30, 30 something. I don't know. I don't really care about professional. It's football. something or in the 30s, I believe. Yeah. <laughs>
fully see them. <sighs> but yeah, Baldur's Gate's pretty wild. Space, there's so much about space we could talk about. It, I don't think we have enough time to talk about it. There's always enough time. There's never enough time to fully talk about space. Like, I don't know, all these movies that are coming out, what was it, The Martian, Dune on Mars, and all these... Interstellar. Yeah, or, Interstellar. Yeah, stuff like that. I still well, it makes me happy because we had stepped away from, like, proper good sci-fi for a while. You yeah. know, but then, like, uh, what is it, The Expanse, and then yep. there's that other TV show. Well, Expanse also is a video game. Is it? Yep, it's on the PlayStation. Yeah. It's a story-based one. It's like three, four hundred years in the future. We're mining all these different operations. Yeah. We have different trade routes. I know it's based off of a novel series. Yep. I, I read the first novel. And we find life somewhere in this time. We had a great war on Earth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I still got to go back and play the other couple chapters. But it's like, this is, this is really good. I like this. Yeah. So, I want to play it, but I don't want it to end. You know, they had, for a while there, that episodic, like story type video games were popular there briefly. Did you play the Walking Dead one? No, we played, it was, a, it was like a color one and my wife played them. It was story based. Was the the story based, I mean, the story based Walking Dead one had nothing to do with like the TV yeah. show. But I mean, that was fucked up. Like I mean, that was fucked up. The Borderlands one, the Telltales. Yeah. That was another one they pushed out that I just, I never fully got around to playing. I didn't have an interest. Well, I like Borderlands. I just, they were just coming out with the games. It's like, I don't want to play a story based game right now. Yeah. And then you had the robot one. What was it humanity or something? Or I don't know. You choose which path you go. That was pretty good too. And through every action you do, it actually has an adverse or. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're talking about. To be human. Yeah, to be human. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was pretty good. It was like, I enjoyed that. That was a good one. That was very well done. Like, I was I was playing it, and I was just like, it's so late, I gotta go to bed. I was like, but I need to know what happens. So, it was another one I enjoyed. I'm, I'm starting to get more into the story ones, especially, like, right before bed. That cracks me up, because I know I would play games with you, and you'd be like... No, I'm not paying any attention to the story. I don't care about the sound. I turn off all sound and music and everything, and I'm like, but the music in this part's really good. You're like, fuck that shit. Yeah, I'm listening to my own stuff, and I'm like, like uh, uh, you hurt my soul keeper. But no, I'm, I'm getting more into the story of, of games now. Oh, uh, look at you maturing. I know, I'm growing <laughs> up. <laughs> um... Yeah, man, there's there's so many games that I need to play, and I just I just don't have the time. Don't have time, I got shit to do. Like I'm doing other activities. Yeah, it's like they take priority because they mean more. They do something in the long run. I need to get back into my shop and and finish building do something. <laughs> no, I mean I need to I need to make my bench still, but I also need to finish wiring up my surround sound speaker system in there. Oh, since you brought your truck, I'm gonna give you that giant door we had. There's so much excess wood in there. Really? Yeah. Okay. And on the the whole back, I think it's just one flat piece that could be used for cabinetry. Could be used like it's. I know. I keep eyeing planers mm -hmm. because, like, I I really need to get once I get a planer, I'll, I'll be able to up possibilities. Like for it. all these possibilities get opened up, but it's been like I don't want to spend. Six hundred dollars. I don't want to spend seven hundred dollars. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Especially since I'm, I bought that. I'm buying that mower for fifteen, and I was like, <laughs> I had to shift my budget around already. You should have bought it for more. <laughs> Why? I'm kidding. Oh yeah, yeah. They saw <laughs> what? It, and I wanted to bring this up. What is it? And I'm not gonna talk about who these people are, but I've had there close just, people to the family that close are always people just like, who it's like I hey, wish, I've used this mug for like seven years. I'll sell it to you for cost. Guns. <laughs> How often are people <laughs> trying to sell me old used guns? Oh shoot, my brother in law came over and tried to sell it. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I literally, literally went on, went online, looked it up, and I was like, I could buy this brand new right now at the same price you're trying to sell it to me for. 
but wait, I did this and I did this. That doesn't raise the that value. That doesn't raise the, the value. Time. Like most time it actually lowers it. But no, I've noticed. And his response to me was, well, then just go buy it. Like he got very frustrated with me. He's like, well, just go buy it then. And I was like, I, I don't, don't even, want to. I don't even necessarily, like, it'd be cool to buy the gun, but I'm doing you a favor by purchasing yes. it. <laughs> it's no different than, so I've made alcohol a couple times within the legal limit of so many gallons in Texas. And yeah. It's gotten to the point that someone will be like, oh, well, I'm getting rid of this stuff. Do you want it? And I was like, how much are you selling it for? And it's always for cost. I was like, you're telling me the only difference is I have to drive to your house now and that's my shipping cost? Yeah. Eh, I'll get it shipped to my door. Nothing changed out of my schedule. Right. And now I have something that I already didn't need because I'm making do with what I have. I don't need to add something to this portfolio of anything. Like, I, again, I'd be doing you a favor doing this. Yes. It's like, I, are you hurting for cash? Well, no, not really. I just, I would like to get into this. <laughs> so your solution is buy it for cost to someone that's close to you. I've never understood that. It was Goose, for example, I ended up selling him a gun, but it was for discount. Yeah. It's like, you don't have a gun, you have children, you have a wife, you need a gun. Sell it to you, lower than cost, because I'm sorry, that's family discount. Like you have a need. I know you weren't looking at guns, but we talked about it. It was like, I'll, I'll sell it to you for this. I think it's on two, three hundred dollars under cost with some rounds with it. So obviously yeah. he got the deal out of it, but I care more about the safety in the long run. And I, I do know that some weapons can go up in price. Yeah. Most weapons do not. They're not always an asset. Right. Like, like that's, that's the biggest thing. Like people talk about cars not really being an asset. A house is. Well, guns are very similar to that. Unless you're getting back there or this super high model that they stop making, companies shut down. Most time they're not, they're not going to raise in value. But what was it? I had someone talking about selling me a scar one time and he wanted $5,000 for it. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm not giving you five grand for this scar. I'll give you two. He was like, oh man, that's too little, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, is it? See, then you gotta talk about how many rounds went through it. Like I, if I'm buying a gun for cost, you better maybe shot like less than hundred rounds easily. Like that is the max. Yeah. And it better be in perfect condition. Yes, I, mean, I don't care about- None of them are. None of them are. See, at that rate, I'll go to an online gun store and buy their scratch ones. Yeah. Because then I get a two thousand dollar gun for like half or less than half the price. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see it. Mike's over here building tornadoes at work in his coffee cup. He's like, "You good? Yeah. You, you sure you're good? You're shaking." Coffee rings all over my desk. Like I have to go back and clean them all the time because I like collect them. Coffee rings drive me crazy. Yeah, well, a lot of things drive you crazy. I mean, you're not wrong. Mostly drivers. Drivers drive me crazy. Why do drivers drive you crazy? You don't even drive. You just like nap while your fucking car drives. When I'm riding my motorcycle, they drive me crazy. <laughs> Cause they're like, oh, I didn't see you. It's like at nighttime, I had a train fucking light set up. There's no way you can't see me. Uh, it's cause the decibels of your horn are too low. Oh, that's what it was. My decibels are too low. Yeah. It's an air horn. <laughs> There's no way you can't hear that. But okay, well, this has been name pending. We've really, really drifted off topic now. It's, it's, I don't even know what happened. It's been interesting. Yeah, they, that and all the interruptions. I'm not even sure we're gonna make it to a full hour on this one. We're gonna shoot for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm Mike Culberson. I'm Keeper. This I is need, name pending. I need you to fuck that like button. I throw a comment below, just a little squigglies, middle fingers, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, give me them emojis. Emojis. Like all them kids do or, nowadays. Or those ASCIIs, because we're old. Actually, actually, it's not kids who do emojis, it's like my parents. It's like old people who do emojis now. 
My mom does do emojis though. Yeah, I, I, I do not do emojis. <laughs> My parents do. I always do it when it pops up and I was like, yeah, that, sure. And then I get, what is, what does this mean? What does this mean? It's like, I don't know. It's what the word means, apparently. <laughs> All right. <laughs>